This is that five frame nuke yard that uh, a little while ago I just about starved out because they were so full of brood. Uh, we're just making our way through, uh, giving them some space. We won't be back here for, well, till the third week now. So they've filled that second box with honey and working on to the third. Uh, we've given them the fourth just to give them a little bit of space uh, to buy us a little bit of time. They have a half section of clover that way and a half section of canola right there. And they have a section of late bloom canola a mile that way. So we just got to make sure that we have enough space on top of these guys uh, just to try to keep ahead of them so they don't plug out on us. So these are the fives that we built right at the uh, beginning of the split. So they are probably some of the most mature queens we have going right now. And they have obviously developed into nice little nests. They'll be yielding, you know, three to four boxes in the first pull here. This is our canola field. Looks absolutely fantastic. They have no shortage of nectar out there. These guys will be plugged by the time we get back. We have yards over there, and we have yards over there, and we have yards over there, and we have yards over there, yards over there. so we have the area pretty nicely covered. So these sixes are bringing it in. One thing about these boxes is my tops sometimes one more yeah sometimes the boxes aren't you know uniform and it doesn't leave a nice flush top but for the most part things uh, stack pretty tight. So you'll notice because of the three sixes and then I stack the two tens on top that uh, I end up with three six lids up on top which leaves spaces here which could be a source of rain. And we find if we keep them nice and tight the bees will propolize that up and no harm done. My bees aren't made of sugar anyways. So these six frame nukes are the nukes we first built off the uh, split strength when we went through. And it looks like they're maturing just beautifully. So I've filled that bottom box up. And they're well onto that second. We're putting thirds on. And you could almost use another box, but we're short of equipment, so we're just gonna make do, uh, try to get here as soon as we can. So I call it maturing. The, uh, as the hives, you know, develop themselves they, uh, that queen establishes that brood nest and that first round of brood emerges and it, it's just that field force that gets pushed out to uh, bring in the resource. And you can tell when they have enough bees to do a lot of work when they start packing the nest full of honey. So that's what I call the, these hives maturing. And I want them to mature 
the same time that this crop, uh, you know, goes into full flower to provide all that resource that just has to be taken and brought back. So I want these hives to develop themselves and, uh, you know, to mature the timing to be able to hit the fields and bring in this nectar. Some years I have it right on the money. This year looks like it's going to be one of those years where I have the timing where these colonies are peaking right when the crop is blooming. Other years, like last year, I had my colonies peak a little bit too late, late into August even, and we had that severe heat and dryness and they missed out on absolutely all the nectar flow and even the pollen flow. So they kind of struggled a little bit because of that. But this year, it looks like we're going to be able to capture that bounty. So we wandered into this nuke yard and I got totally caught off guard. This yard is a yard that I took and cut right down in the spring, cut them down into a bunch of nukes. I actually made my five frames out of this yard. So I turned this, this yard of 60 into 180 or something like that. And what I did, and I don't know if you guys pay attention to what I do, what I did last year, but uh, when I slash down these yards, what I do is I leave the old queen and just two frames of bees and I just leave them alone and I have them rebuild themselves. Um, and what I'm doing, what I'm anticipating what's going to happen is by leaving that queen, that queen that's laying and doing a good job, I assess them as being good queens, um, and leaving them with just a little bit of bees to be able to reestablish that nest. What I'm doing is I'm putting that colony into a state of panic. And I'm doing it at a time which is absolutely prime time for building bees. So it's done, you know, between that May and end of June. So in the solstice there, these bees, they just have the spirit to rejuvenate that nest and build it back to something productive. And it's an interesting spirit that you can tap into whenever you can find it because they can do absolutely amazing things. This yard was slashed down to two frames of bees. Basically the drifters coming in maybe just scraps of brood on a frame and a couple maybe another extra frame of bees in there and a good laying queen. I've kind of forgot about this yard a little bit. I don't pay a lot of attention to this yard. It's just kind of on the edges. It doesn't really capture my mind very much. And coming through just you know uh, and what we had to do is we dropped foundation frames in because we we're running out of brood frames. So they're left short on frames and such. So what I did is two weeks ago I come through and I just found a little bit bigger ones, slapped an excluder on and a box. And I only did half the yard because the other half wasn't, didn't look like it was growing. But what I didn't see was a massive brood nest down below. It's hatched out. It sent its foragers out to the field and absolutely plugged this yard right up. So we come here and practically put a box in every one of these hives here. So we're looking at one to two boxes on all these. It's just my scrap yard. And I'm gonna collect like, well, there's gotta be 50 pounds and they're, they're plugged right out. There's some of these singles that I didn't get to. They have foundation on the outside. Um, and just because of the mass of bees that emerged, the amount of nectar coming in, they backfilled that brood nest and are actually in swarm pr preparation. So we, you know, what can you do about that? I just cut about, I just cut the cells at the bottom. I left, make sure I left a, f a cell or two just to make sure that if the process of swarm has gone on that they can, you know, reestablish that nest, push that nectar up into that box on top and hopefully carry on. But uh, at any rate, I tapped into that spirit and I'm collecting a shit ton of honey on this yard. This is why it's really important. Um, I try to visit every yard at least every two weeks. So I put every yard in my round. I go through all the priority hives. Then I go on and go through the yards uh, that are just tagged on the end. And this one happens to hit the end of the line every time because I put low priority on it. Um, and it's a good thing I made it around two weeks ago to slap those boxes on. And it's a good thing that I come around this week to make sure that they had enough space because they have just absolutely flourished. 
can see just packed full of honey. Hive after hive. And these little singles here, so you see they're bearding. Foundation on the side walls, totally drawn out. You can see the yard hasn't been mowed yet. We'll get them over here shortly. I'll show you, there's hives like this. It's got a foundation on the outside walls, completely drawn out. And to the point where they're dropping swarm cells at the bottom. Just because they completely plugged up their brood nest. So with this space on top, um, hopefully what they're going to do is reorganize the nest, push it up, allow the queen to continue her laying, and prevent any type of swarming that might go on in this yard. Hopefully I caught them before they start making the preparation. I don't have time to go through and do anything about it, so I pretty much have to just let things go as they have uh, all prepared. Just one of those things. As you can see across the valley here, a beautiful blooming crop of canola.